It's Sumati from Kodambakam and Nandini from Sholing and Allur in Chennai. This is how much they spend on water every year. But I'm not here to talk to you about the water crisis crippling Chennai year on year. You're already familiar with that problem. I'm here to talk to you about the fine print mentioned here. Climate change says. I'm here to talk to you about the price you and I are paying for climate change every day as part of our water bill. Now this says, as in this price, is expected to increase by 5 to 10 percent by next year due to erratic rainfall patterns, initiatives by the state government, and what you and I are doing or not doing. For the past eight years, Chennai has been struck by rains, floods, cyclones, drought-like conditions, and for the past eight years of me being a journalist, this is an issue I've consistently reported on. So how urgent is this? Picture this. Two thermal power plants, three sewage treatment plants, four suburban railway stations, 28 bus stops, 79% of the Chennai metro rail, houses along the Adyar estuary in Ilangarai Beach could all be underwater in the next 70 years, risking the lives of over 1 million people, as per the climate change action plan by the Greater Chennai Corporation. By 2030, just seven years from now, over 70% of Chennai will not have access to water, and at least 30% is at the risk of floods, as per the 2018 Niti Aayog report. In another five years, 100 meters of the Chennai coast will be submerged as a 7 centimeter sea level rise is expected. Now, this isn't a distant nightmare. It's all going to happen in the time we are alive. It was November 2015. The first time I went live reporting news on national television, that's on NDTV, was when heavy rains had engulfed Chennai, triggering widespread floods. Unaware that a calamity was about to strike, I was at the Madhya Kailash Junction in the south of the city, reporting on how a road had caved in due to the heavy rains. Within hours, the city was completely flooded, and all the roads leading to Tambaram, which is in the south end of the city, which is where my home was, were completely cut off. Even three boat rides later, I couldn't reach home. The network signals were so erratic that my family had to check out the live telecast to even know where I was. Since 2015, Chennai has been living the collective trauma of the crisis. Every year, inundation has become an annual affair. 2015 floods, 2016 Varada cyclone, 2017 Oki cyclone, 2018 Gaja cyclone, 2019 drought, 2021 heavy inundation. But it was in 2019 that I realized that I was paying a price for climate change, that this was a personal problem. At the time, I was living in Mambalam, which is in the west of Chennai, where we were getting water for just an hour every day. It was a very hot summer, and my sister had just given birth to a beautiful baby boy. So there we were, four women, one baby, and ten buckets of water. For cleaning, washing, tending to menstrual hygiene, baby duties, the water was never enough, and I was spending 7,000 rupees to fill these buckets with brownish colored water and add another 4,000 rupees for surge rates and drinking water. That year, our bill went up by 50%. Now, since 2015, though the situation has not been as adverse, what I've realized is that this climate change cess has been gradually increasing, that right now it is screaming for attention. And all of this isn't just Mother Nature's doing. Over the past eight decades, over-extraction of groundwater, unchecked urban growth, lack of reservoir maintenance has depleted our water resources. And the result? Soaring prices, reliance on water tankers, long queues at the water tap. And this is what is contributing to climate change cess. And Chennai is the perfect example of how those things exacerbated by climate change can morph into a climate emergency. And every year, it's the same areas that get flooded, it's the same people who run for shelter, and it's for the same people that the cess is recurring. And every year, it's the same people I meet during summer and monsoon. So I figured, why not share this idea of climate change cess with them? After all, climate consciousness can be awakened only if you and I realize how much we're paying for it. I've known Sumati since 2018. She lives in Kodambakam in the west of Chennai, and I meet her every summer in monsoon. So in 2020, when I went to visit her, she was surprised. This is what she asked me. 
தண்ணி வருதேமா நீ அதுக்கு வந்த ஐ தென் எக்ஸ்பிளைன் டு ஹர் தட் ஈவன் இஃப் தஸ் வாட்டர் கம்மிங் இன் ஹர் டேப்ஸ் த கிரைசிஸ் இஸ் ஃபார் ஃப்ரம் ஓவர் ஹர் வாட்டர் எக்ஸ்பென்சிஸ் சர்ச் ஃப்ரம் டென் தௌசண்ட் ருபீஸ் இன் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபிஃப்டீன் டு ஃபிஃப்டீன் தௌசண்ட் ருபீஸ் இன் டுவெண்ட்டி எயிட்டீன் நவ் தேட்ஸ் அ ஃபிஃப்டி பர்சென்ட் ஹைக் இட் தென் வெண்ட் அப் டு டுவெண்ட்டி டூ தௌசண்ட் ருபீஸ் இன் டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபிஃப்டி டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி ஒன் விச் இஸ் அனாதர் ஃபிஃப்டி பர்சென்ட் ஹைக் அண்ட் ஹர் இன்கம் டிட் நாட் கீப் பேஸ் அண்ட் சுமதி இஸ் த பர்ஃபெக்ட் எக்ஸாம்பிள் ஆஃப் ஹவு people from the most vulnerable communities who contribute the least to climate change are the most affected by it but here she is mentioned wa- treating waterborne illnesses now that means if her child contracts the flu but there is another another major issue that we are ignoring this is amuda who also lives in the same locality as sumati where they get water for 4 hours in a day for the past 10 years this has been amuda's routine At 4 p.m., she comes to the common taps at the main road and sits there and does the washing and cleaning and carries 10 pots of water through narrow lanes to her house. She walks with a limp, has severe backache, has difficulty sleeping at night. Her menstrual cycle is erratic because of continuous stress. Like Amuda, in most Indian households, it's the women who are doing the heavy lifting. A survey conducted by the Information Resource Center for the Deprived Urban Communities revealed that a majority of women about the age of 40 suffer from arthritis and joint pains. And when I shared this with Amuda, she just brushed it aside saying we have to embrace this lady's problem. In fact, this is what she said. If I start taking care of myself, then who's going to take care of my family? I can't be spending money on myself. This is Nandini. who lives in the IT corridor now she is from a higher income group but her area that is sholing and alur does not have a metro water connection at least until very recently which means she has to pay for water throughout the year and that includes drinking water as well she lives in an area which faces inundation every monsoon now that means there's property damage that needs to be accounted for as well she is now building a new house and because of the additional water costs her construction cost has gone up by 40% Whew. at least now can we stop associating climate change with polar bears and melting glaciers it's here it's in your water bill and yes the state government did take action interestingly chennai is the first city in india to come up with a climate change action plan a great initiative a necessity comes as great news and it also made a splash in raising some awareness about climate change in the city to cater to the water scarcity that strikes every summer in 2013 the tamil nadu government made it mandatory for all residential buildings to have rainwater harvesting system great initiative to awaken individual consciousness but the public areas were not properly desilted an integrated rainwater harvesting system was not put in place so even if i conserve rainwater who's going to take it to the reservoir so that it can come handy on a not so rainy day and the reason why chennai gets inundated every monsoon is because we are relying on a storm water drain network that was built during the british era or at least until last year now the partly constructed project has definitely given the city much needed respite but it still lacks a uniform plan of action so either you can wait for these integrated plans to take shape or you can try out methods to make your water bill cheaper let me share some of these tried and tested techniques by the people of chennai and their water bills reflect savings the first solution being water from air yes it's that simple so this generator draws moisture from the air which it then converts with the help of a condenser into drinking water now this requires no maintenance no electricity and an iit madras team has said that this is touted to be 20 times cheaper than bottled water another solution a drinkable book the tear out pages can serve as filters and provide germ free water for at least 4 years rakesh ori is someone i've known since 2018 he lives in the it corridor in an apartment complex with 170 flats he lives in sholing nallur in the south of chennai does not have a metro water connection at least until very recently which means they had to pay for water throughout the year they were spending 14000 rupees every day on water tankers he used to say that water is more expensive than milk 
So one day, he brought the residents together for a contest. Who uses the least water? He even introduced incentives to encourage people coming up with sustainable solutions. They installed a sewage treatment plant, a rainwater harvesting system, and their water bills which came down by 50%. And now all their lush green gardens and toilets use only recycled water. Several communities in the IT corridor have popularized the idea of a bucket is cooler than a shower. A certain gated community in Kanten Chavadi in the south of Chennai has now installed private water meters at, in individual houses. Now, since this concept of you pay for what you consume was introduced, they saw that their consumption of water went down from 1.6 lakh liters of water a day to just 50,000 liters of water in a day. At least 40 communities in the IT corridor have managed to figure out a way to harvest rainwater independently at their houses. In this, during these heavy showers in June, July, they conserved 20 lakh liters of water a day. And that means they are saving on 2.6 lakh rupees per day on water tankers. Residents of Perangudi conduct a lake festival every year where people of all age groups come together to desilt the lake, clean up the garbage, and even propose sustainable solutions to reduce water usage. And what did Nandini from Sholing and Allur do? Well, she too installed a rainwater harvesting system that has brought down her bill by 25%. She's now con constructing a house at an elevated level so as to ensure no inundation and thus cutting down on future losses. And that's how she's bringing down her climate change says. So try any or all of these methods. Save water, save money, literally. So go back home, reevaluate your accounts, and find out how much you are paying for climate change. After all, climate consciousness can be awakened only if you and I realize how much we are paying for it. Thank you. Thank you.